Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman and Lucy Lehman and we are live today in front of our Annabelle Hydrangeas. So let me see if you guys, who's checking in from where today, let me know where you guys are viewing this from and let me know what the weather's like by you. Here in our Cranberry Fields Flower Farm, it's about 70 degrees today. It's the most spectacular day and the skies are blue and it's just one of those days where you're like, wow, this is like just insane because we've had like some really crazy weather here it's been like 95 degrees and i don't know like you know 60 degrees and it keeps we keep having these crazy temperature swings but today is just perfect so lucy's happy it's nice and cool and a lot of you have asked me what kind of dog lucy is so she's a bernese mountain dog so um just to let you know the who's who here at the farm uh, this morning. And so I'm gonna give you guys some great hydrangea care tips today. I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about how I grow mine and how I care for them and, and how I get the best vase life from them. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Kelly Lehman. I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm in Cranberry, New Jersey. And I love giving you guys fun free flower tips. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't done so already and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I post another fun free flower tip video. So, oh, good morning. Hey, Hey, Christina Nichols, thank you. Did I say your name right? Christiana Nichols, nice to, nice to see you. Good morning, good morning. And so here's the story, guys. This is my Annabelle hydrangeas, and this is what they look like in June. And uh, just a very quick florist power tip. I don't like to cut these hydrangeas when they're at this stage. They're kind of poofy. They look like beautiful, like softballs. They're nice and soft. But I find that when I cut them uh, at this stage, they wind up kind of flopping in the vase. Hey, Rachel. Oh, thanks for checking in from Washington. Sweet. My son lives in Washington. So when I cut my hydrangeas when they're in this kind of white poofy stage, I'm going to walk slow because I find that when I move around too much, sometimes... Oh, hey, Rachel. Watching from, oh, watching from Kentucky. I think that the watching came out as Washington. Maybe my Wi-Fi was slow. I'm going to move slow because sometimes uh, the buffering on my... Um, iPhone won't keep up with me, so I'm going to go super slow when I show you some of these shots. So uh, the Annabelle hydrangeas look absolutely beautiful now, but when I cut them in this poofy stage, I only get like a few days of vase life, and I find that they flop super easy. And I also find that when I cut them in a stage where they're in this green form, so this is like right before they turn... Um, well, like white and fluffy. Oh, hey, everybody checking in. Oh, hey, from California. Hey, Kim. Hey, Mark. Hey, from Wales. Oh, nice to see you from the UK. Hey, Debbie from Georgia. So when I cut them in this stage, which is like this beautiful green stage, uh, hey, Alicia from Connecticut, uh, they flop super fast in the vase. And hey, Colin from uh, Massachusetts. So don't cut them in this green stage right before they turn white. I would not cut them in this stage when they are white and beautiful. I would wait until they turn green again. And they're gonna wind up turning green in about July. And they turn into like the same beautiful green color. Um, oh, hey guys from Long Island. I'm from Sable, Long Island. Hey, Vicki Lawson. So wait until they turn green uh, in July in kind of like this poofy, poofy uh, stage because you'll get this gorgeous color on this gorgeous poof and then it will dry out in the vase like that. So if you can wait till it reaches that semi-dried out stage, you're going to have a beautiful flower arrangement that's going to look spectacular all summer and it's actually going to look spectacular all year round. And um, I actually will spray my Annabelle hydrangeas and some of my other hydrangeas with something called floral spray paint. And you can use this for fresh florals. And I have that, uh, that product listed on my Amazon shop page. I'll always list products that I use or that I talk about. Uh, I'll always have them in descriptions on my Kelly Lehman Amazon shop page. And you guys can always find them there. I have a whole bunch of different categories like a florist, you know, things that I use and gardening tips that I use and gardening um, tools that I use and plants. So you could always check that out or you could just go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and they will have fresh floral uh, paint and you can actually paint your flowers. So, hey, Frank from Detroit, thanks for checking in. Always nice to hear from you. So I wanna give you some more tips down here. We're gonna go down low right now. I've got some hydrangeas that are in a vase and I wanna show you one of my favorite florist tips. Hey, Kevin from the UK. So these are three endless summer um, yeah, hydrangeas. And this guy's looking spectacular, nice and poofy and gorgeous. This guy started to kind of poop out. It started to get kind of like floppy and wilty. And this guy's completely had it. He's completely exhausted. So here's the florist power tip. When you guys start looking a little floppy, they start to look a little deflated, they're not quite at this stage yet, you just give the bottom of the stem a little snip, 
because what happened is that stem got clogged up by some of the bacteria in the water. And I purposely didn't change my water because I want to show you some of the fun stuff floating in here. So this water is a couple days old. Uh, it's got some bacteria forming and hydrangeas are notorious for sucking up some of those bacteria uh, elements and then getting clogged. And then the water can't make its way up the stem uh, and to poof out that flower. Hey, Alia Lennox, thanks for checking in. So I'm gonna give this guy a little snip. I'm change my hands here, hold on a second. I just go up the stem about an inch or two and I'll give it a snip. And then I just place it right back in fresh water. So I should have had a fresh water container here. I did not, if I was a better YouTuber, I would have had that set up, but I'm not, <laughs> so sorry. Um, Hey Graham, thanks for checking in from uh, Virginia. So what's gonna happen is since I gave that hydrangea that was slightly drooping a little snip, it's gonna poof out to be this stage in just a couple hours. But I'm gonna make sure that I put it in a super cool place because a lot of times people will put their hydrangea vases in front of like a window. And if there's sunlight hitting it, that hydrangea will not come back. It will not like, you know, poof up again. So it needs to be cool. It, you need to unclog that stem and then chances are it's gonna poof up again within a couple hours. So that's uh, one of my favorite hydrangea um, florist tips. But I have to say, if you have a hydrangea that's really far gone, like this guy. I mean, this one's completely deflated. Even if you do that trick, it may not, uh, it may not be gone. So I don't know, we'll see. Hey, home cooking uh, with Wafa Youssef, nice to see you. Hey, Kevin, you're from the UK. Your Annabelle is not flowering yet, we're in June. I think that's okay and I wanna show you why. Let me just finish this tip real quick and I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, take that question because I love that question. So anyway, if you can get your hydrangeas uh, at the stage when they're just starting to flop, that's so much better because if they're too far gone, they're probably not gonna come back. So, um, so someone just brought up a great, uh, a great you know, question. They said, my Annabelles aren't blooming yet. So here's the story. Look at how spectacular and beautiful these gals are. But if you look down my hydrangea row, I've got four of them that are barely blooming. And the story with those guys is that they're under shade, they're under more shade. So they just haven't had a chance to get started yet. So I think it's okay. Oh, hey, Aaron from Paris. Oh, love that. Bonjour. <laughs> I love that you guys are all over the globe. That just blows my mind every week. So these Annabelles have uh, a, a little more time to go before they bloom. And once again, it's just because they're in more shade. So, um, oh, this is interesting. Treasure around 006 says, your grandmother used warm water for hydrangeas. I have heard that. So I've heard that if you put them in a vase with like, um, like lukewarm water instead of cold water, they might hydrate faster. So um, I would try it out. I think that's worth experimenting with. I have a feeling that maybe the warmer water may travel up the stem easier than cold water. So I think your grandmother had a, a great tip there. But uh, here's another story with these Annabelles at the end of this row. And I'm afraid to walk too close to them because I don't want to lose my internet. But these guys at the end, if you've been watching uh, the channel, I showed you that I pruned the last four hydrangea back to about two feet at the beginning of spring. And that's because some deer were eating them. They were kind of a mess. I pruned them back to two feet. So those guys, they're all coming in on brand new fresh stems that are coming up from the base of the plant. The rest of these gals, uh, I did my usual laziness and I did not prune them back. So their stems are coming from like, you know, more of like the, the base stems that were put in place last year. So their stems didn't have to get that long. And I wanna show you what I mean by that. I'm pushing my luck here with the technology world. So as I come in here, these stems, these hydrangeas are coming in on some of this wood from last year. So since I didn't prune these back, it had this base to grow from. And now it only had to provide a stem that starts from here and comes up to here. So that's kind of a much shorter stem than if it had to come all the way from the base of the plant. So that's why I think these guys bloomed a lot faster than the ones on the end, in addition to them being in shade and then just having to mature more and get a little more sunlight. So I think it's okay if, if your Annabelles haven't pruned yet. I have never had a year where my Annabelles didn't bloom. So if you're looking for a super, um, a super one, that's the one. What do you do when the majority of, ah, I missed that question, I'm sorry, it faded away. If you can repost that, that would be great. I have to learn to be a speed reader with some of these. 
So if you're looking for a hydrangea that you don't have to worry about the blooms coming back every year, Annabelle Hydrangea is great. Uh, Proven Winners has their version of Annabelle and is called Incredible, and they come in on stems that are even sturdier. So check out those Proven Winners, Incredible. I planted a ton of them in my garden, actually in the back of this fence. So I'm gonna show you what those look like. What do you do when the majority of a single flower is white but has a few brown petals? Oh, all right, so super question, and I actually, Oh, I wish I was around um, uh, where my endless summer are because that's what happened to mine. So what happens is sometimes these gals get burned up. The endless summer get burned up if they're in full sun. The Annabelles get burned up. You know, I, I just kind of clip away some of those brown petals, but I hate to say it, I think the reason why the petals on the flower are turning brown is because they're just getting too much sun. I actually have an umbrella, like a beach umbrella, over my endless summer that are around the back of my house because we have a photo shoot going on here with models and videographers in about two weeks. And they're just, my endless summer, just getting too much sun and they're starting to get those brown spots on the flower. And there's nothing I could do. It, it has, you know, I, I water it. I wanna make sure I don't overwater it, but it's not dehydrated. It's just getting burnt up from too many hours of sun in the afternoon. So I literally have a beach umbrella over them to protect them until the photo shoot is done. So I think that uh, sometimes the only way around that is to either replant them or plant um, like a tree or something that's tall that can, that can cast some shade. Because at the end of every summer, these white Annabelles are usually burnt up right here because they're in full sun. And these guys are like that deep dark green because they have that shade. Uh, David, I just missed your question. It was something about blue hydrangeas. I'm sorry, if you could repost it, that would be great. So what else did I wanna show you guys? Um, so yeah, so I don't even uh, have a watering system on these guys because they're mature. So if you plant your hydrangeas, it's important to keep up with the watering the first few years. Uh, but then I have to say Mother Nature takes care of the watering uh, to, uh, of these plants for me. Uh, Mercy, oh, you were right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I swear. I get like half of these questions and then I blow it. So what else can I tell you about these guys? So I don't prune back uh, the majority of my Annabelle hydrangeas and this is what they look like. And I hardly water them at all. And these guys didn't get fertilizer. So I don't fertilize much because I have really good soil here. So if you want like a really easy plant to grow, incredible hydrangea by Proven Winners and uh, Annabelle hydrangea. And pretty soon my limelights are gonna come back. Some of you have asked me questions about your limelight. You said, they're not blooming. I don't have any blooms, any buds. I don't either. So that big tall, plant in the back. I'm going to try to, um, oh, I just realized that if I touch my screen, I get your questions back. All right, hold on a second. Let's back up for a minute. David, your blue hydrangea blooms well, but the blooms always seem too heavy. Oh no, now I lost you guys. What did I just do? No, cancel that. Oh, I blew it. Somehow I, I don't know what I did, but I lost the questions. <laughs> so anyway, the hydrangea in the back is a limelight hydrangea. I don't have any blooms on that yet, and that's okay. They're gonna come in later on in the season. So um, if your limelights aren't showing any signs of flowers, no worries. You see me, oh great, David, thank you for that. Because I just thought I lost all you guys by playing around with my screen. So don't worry that your limelights aren't coming in, and uh, that should be fine. I have a whole bunch of endless summer way in the back garden there. I'm gonna try to zoom you guys in a bit. That burst of blue is endless summer, one of my absolute favorite hydrangeas to grow. Super easy, love them. Um, oh, Bloomy, okay, do they need acidic soil? Um, these guys, I have to say, I don't really know the exact pH of the soil here. I think, I shouldn't even say that I think. I think it's, I, I, I think it's whatever An Annabelle hydrangeas love, which I'm not even sure. Um, I know that you can get blue hydrangeas if your soil is acidic, which is probably what the soil is in that back garden, because those hydrangeas are endless summer, and if the soil's acidic, they get blue, and if the soil is alkaline, they would be pink. So I know that the garden back there is acidic, which makes me think that this might be acidic to neutral soil here. And guys, you can do like a, a soil test um, at the store. You can just like buy it at Home Depot or, or your local garden centers to find out what the pH of your soil is, but you can't change the color of Annabelle hydrangea. So you can change the colors of your Endless Summer and some of your other hydrangeas that, you know, that start off either pink or blue, and you can switch the colors back and forth and I made you guys a video it's in my uh, it's it's gonna be in um, like my playlist I think there's an Annabelle there's a hydrangea playlist and there's also a Kelly Lehman live 
playlist and I show you exactly how to change those colors back and forth. But you won't be able to change the colors back and forth for your, um, your white Annabelle hydrangeas and your limelights. So that's the story with the color switch. Uh, what else can I show you guys here? Oh, I want to thank uh, an anonymous viewer for buying me a cup of coffee today. You guys, if you're liking my flower tips, you can always buy me a cup of coffee. There's a link below. So I appreciate it. There was some kind comments made by an anonymous uh, coffee buyer for me. So thank you so much for that. Thank you, Bridget, for checking in for Illinois. And I will put that link in descriptions below. And um, I guess while we're here... Let's see. Hey, Rosie. I wanted to show you something cool that's not hydrangea related. I cut a whole bunch of mint. Uh, I showed you guys a couple weeks ago how I'm growing a ton of mint. And what happened was I had them by my um, kitchen sink in some water and I use them for tea. Sheldon and I make tea with them all the time. And what happened was I noticed that they started rooting. So these were just cuttings. I had just cut them from my garden. They looked, the stems looked kind of like this when I put them in the glass of water a few weeks ago. And now I'm realizing that since they've been sitting in water so long, they're super, super, super easy to root. So I'm gonna wind up planting a whole bunch of these. I didn't realize that it was so easy to uh, grow, you know, more mint plants by just putting them in water. But these are all roots on the bottom of here. So that's, that's terrific. And I wanted to show you one other uh, just gardening tip that, that I, I stumbled apart uh, upon this weekend. We have a ton of blueberries coming in, a load of blueberries, and I'm using the blueberry branches as fillers for my uh, flower arrangement. So a lot of times I'll bring flowers in. I know a lot of you like to arrange flowers from fresh cuttings. And um, so I'm using blueberry stems because they have a really nice face life. And I'm also using this variegated wigalia uh, when I'm you know, making some arrangements from the flowers in my garden. And guys, super exciting news. I am like so close to having my online fresh cut flower uh, course available for you guys. So I made three courses. One of them is how to plant annuals in your garden to make a fresh cut flower garden. Uh, the second mini course is how to grow perennials in your gardens to make a fresh cut flower garden. And the third one is how to arrange your flowers from your fresh cut flower garden to make beautiful arrangements for your own home. So those are gonna be live, I think in like maybe a week or two. So I'm um, really close to those. Thank you guys for giving me the idea idea to actually create those courses. A lot of you had said uh, that you wanted to learn how to grow, you know, flowers in your own homes and your own gardens so you can bring them inside and make beautiful arrangements. And um, so I did it. So it's going to be coming live. I'll keep you posted. If you're interested in finding out about those courses, uh, just let me know in comments below or comments to the side, and I'll make sure that I send you a link, and then you'll get notified when those courses are live. And they're mini courses, so they're not super expensive. I think they're like $9.95 each. Um, but let me know if you're interested, and I'll give you like a little preview. And we're going to be doing some free giveaways for like the first 100 people that sign up for the course, and so that should be kind of fun. And um, yeah, so I, I guess that's, that's it. I want to thank you guys for joining me today. I have my dad in town from Florida. My son just graduated from high school yesterday he's he's the fourth child um, he's my, my baby so we are um, we are done with graduations for high school so I'm excited he did really great but I'm gonna go and spend some time with my family and thank you so much for joining me today guys and please say hi to us over on my Kelly Lehman's flower tribe Facebook group because there's gardeners from all over the world and they're posting pictures of beautiful flowers from their own gardens and they're asking and answering the tons of questions that I can't get to each week so thank you for showing up there. Um, oh, thank you, Rachel, for the congratulations. I appreciate that. Does anybody have any last questions? I'll try to take like one or two more questions before I head inside uh, to the fam, but I wanted to see if I can give you guys any extra value before I leave today. I love providing you guys with a lot of garden value each week. Oh, hey, Ginger from Washington. Oh, thank you for the congratulations, home cooking with Wafa. <laughs> I appreciate that. So any more hydrangea or garden questions or fresh cut flower questions uh, that I can answer for you guys before I take off. And I try to answer a lot of questions on our Cranberry Fields Instagram page too. Thank you, Rosie, for the congratulations. I appreciate that. You guys are awesome. You really are. And the questions that I can't get to, like I said, a lot of people are tackling those questions on the Kelly Lehman uh, uh, Facebook page. I have a hydrangea this year that's not flowered. Oh, Brian, I, that, that's like the number one question that I get. Why is my hydrangea not blooming? So it might be getting too much or too little water. 
it might be getting too much or too little sun. If you have too much nitrogen in your soil, you might have tons of green leaves, but no blooms. You could test that out very easily with a soil kit. And if you find that the nitrogen is really high, because sometimes people get that high nitrogen content from fertilizing their lawn, and lawn fertilizers have a ton of nitrogen, and sometimes that rainwater will wash the, you know, the, the nutrients from the grass into the flower beds, and then you wind up getting no blooms. But you can just put some wood chips, like some wood mulch around your plants then, and that might eventually lower that nitrogen uh, concentration, but that takes a while. And uh, some people prune their hydrangeas back at the wrong time of year. But I made a video for you guys, and it's called, um, it's, you know, it basically says reasons why my hydrangeas are not blooming. So you could check that out on one of my hydrangea playlists, and I will try to link that up when this video uh, is uploaded later on today. So check that out. And let me see if there were any more questions here that I, I just missed three of them. <laughs> I need to like multitask. I need to have one of those little like video managers where people have someone with headsets next to them and they kind of save the questions. So, but that's, uh, <laughs> I got to figure that out next. Okay, any more questions that I can grab? Uh, I'd like the link to your course. Oh, awesome, Debbie. I will make sure that I send you that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a link that has um, a PDF, a free PDF file that I already made. It's called Four Must-Have Flowers for Your Garden. And when I send you that link, when you put your email in there to collect that free download that's already made, then that puts you on my Cranberry Fields uh, Kelly Lehman mailing list. And then any kind of courses that I come up with, you will automatically be notified in case you like them. So, oh, Aaron, great. I'll send you that also. And your endless summer aren't blooming yet either okay so that's i think um endless summer usually you're starting to come in by now so if there is a chance that maybe you prune them back at the wrong time like if you prune them back anytime after august you may not get that first set of blooms but you're probably going to get the second set of blooms that come in on the new growth um oh it's your first live oh thank you for joining us oh that's awesome i love when i, I see new flower tribe members and guys please always let me know where you're viewing uh, my videos from um i have an assistant now and she's mapping out all the places you guys are showing up from all over the world and it's mind-blowing i mean you're in like the middle east and africa and new jersey and yours are blooming but i have oh you have a ton of blooms well that's good news yeah i, I definitely wouldn't tweak with perfection so did you mean that you don't have a ton of blooms? Sometimes that happens, especially with newer plants. So if you have a hydrangea that you just put in the ground like a year or two ago, sometimes they take a while and you might only get like two or three blooms out of them. Hey, Sherry, thank you for the sunflower. So keep that in mind too, guys. Maturity is a very big factor in blooming with hydrangeas. Sometimes they just need uh, to establish themselves and you may not get a ton of blooms until year three or four. So just be careful with that. And check out some of the other, I think I have like 17 hydrangea care tip videos that cover like real specific things. So uh, you could check that out if you just hop on over to like my, my actual homepage and I have them all listed in a hydrangea playlist. And I'm hoping to answer as many of your flower questions as I can so you guys can grow beautiful flowers in your own gardens. Okay, guys, I hear my poppies. He's he's coming out here, so I'm gonna go say hi to him and spend time with the fam. And um, oh, thank you, Addy. You're from Delaware. Love your channel. I appreciate that. You guys have no idea how much your kind comments mean to me. Like I read them over, and when I have bad days, I actually save some of them in a file, and I just read them over, and I'm like, ah. Oh, Ginger said, do I cut my hydrangeas back in fall, winter? I usually don't prune back any of my hydrangeas. Um, that's one of my secret, wonderful tips that I, that's no longer a secret. I'm, I'm kind of telling everybody it all the time. I want you guys to know this. My hydrangeas bloom when I don't cut them back. A lot of times people will need to do that to give them a recharge. I am super lazy. I hardly ever prune back my Endless Summer, my Annabelle, my Limelight. I hardly prune back any of them. And I usually get fantastic blooms. So a lot of people do need do need to do that because it needs a recharge but you have to be careful that you don't prune back your hydrangeas at the wrong time of year because sometimes you, you'll wind up cutting off this year's blooms if you do it wrong so but I have a ton of um, videos showing you you know when to do it for certain plants and sometimes I will I prune back that limelight hydrangea in the back and the one way back there this year because I hadn't pruned them back in six years so every now and then I will give them a recharge but most of the time I don't um, okay, and Kevin, would you prune your Annabelle for the first time? Oh, I missed that one. So my Annabelle, like I haven't pruned these guys back in so many years. And then the only reason why I did these last four was because the deer got at them and I pruned them down to two feet and I did that in the beginning of spring. So that was right before that growth started. So I, you know, it's really important to do it when they're dormant. 
Okay, Sandra. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks again for checking in. And I will see you guys hopefully next uh, Thursday at 1030. I'm trying to go live uh, every Thursday at 1030. So I will see you guys in the next video. Lucy's all ready for her nap. Hey, Lorna. I'll see you guys later.